<clears throat> Thank you, Mary, and good afternoon. As Mary pointed out earlier, I will be presenting the highlights of our 2010 non-consolidated financial statements, which cover the Airport Authority's activities here at YVR. The Airport Authority earns revenue from three main sources. First source is aeronautical revenue in the form of landing and terminal fees, collected to recover the costs related to airline operations. This revenue amounted to $122.8 million in 2010, up slightly from $122.3 million in 2009. The slight increase was driven by a 3% increase in landing fee rates, as agreed by the airlines, to help cover the costs of the new de-icing program, partially offset by certain terminal fees, which are calculated based on the prior year's passenger volumes, which were lower. The second source, of non sorry, the second source is non-aeronautical revenue, which includes revenue from concessions, such as duty-free stores and car rentals, car parking, and land and terminal rents. Revenue from these sources increased to $156.3 million in 2010, up from $150.2 million in 2009, due mainly to the effect of Olympic Games-related advertising and retail merchandise revenue. The third source of revenue is the Airport Improvement Fee, or AIF. The revenue earned from the first two sources is not sufficient to cover both the cost of operating the airport and the airport's capital projects. To fund these capital projects, the Airport Authority collects the AIF. Total revenue earned from the fee in 2010 was $89.6 million, up from $86.3 million in 2009, driven by the increase in passengers. A portion of non-AIF revenue goes towards covering the cost of operating the airport, which includes salaries, wages and benefits, material supplies and services, payments in lieu of taxes and insurance. In 2010, these costs increased to $141.4 million, from $132 million in 2009. The increase arose mainly from the cost of preparing for and operating the airport during the Games, a full year of maintaining the new facilities that came into service during 2009, as well as expenses related to hosting the World Route Development Forum. The Airport Authority also uses a portion of its revenue to pay ground lease rent to the federal government. The rent expense in the Statement of Operations amounted to $33.2 million in 2010, down from $65.6 million in 2009. The $65.6 million in 2009 represented the averaging, as required under accounting guidelines, of the declining fixed rent cash payments over the four-year period 2006 through to 2009. 2010 was the first year under the new ground lease formula under which rent is calculated as a percentage of revenue. When the total cash needed to pay for capital projects during any year exceeds the amount of cash available after payment of operating costs, ground lease and interest costs, debt financing is required. The Airport Authority takes a conservative approach to debt levels and strives to achieve a reasonable balance between debt and sources of revenue. Debt carries interest payments, which in 2010 amount to $32.9 million, up slightly from $32.7 in 2009. I will describe the change in the Authority's debt program more fully in a moment. As required under generally accepted accounting principles in the Statement of Operations, the cost of capital projects is spread over the useful life of the projects, as opposed to being recognized as the cash paid each year during the project's construction. This spreading of the cost over the useful life is reflected as amortization on the Statement of Operations. Total amortization in 2010 amounted to $106.5 million, up from $92 million in 2009, reflecting a full year of amortization on the various capital projects that came into service during 2009. In 2008, YVR Airport Services issued common shares to City Infrastructure Investors, or CII, in exchange for 50% ownership of YVRAS. Cash received from this sale is held in YVRS for investment, with interest on this cash being paid to the Airport Authority, which in 2010 amounted to $0.2 million in dividend revenue. There were no asset write-downs in 2010. There was a gain of $1.1 million realized in 2010 on the sale of the Airport Authority's holdings of asset-backed commercial paper, the market for which failed in August 2007, resulting in a national restructuring of these assets and a write-down of value in 2009. The net amount of these three items in 2010 is the $1.3 million you see here. The total excess revenue or expenses was $56 million in 2010, up from $38.8 million in 2009, in summary due principally to the change in ground lease expense and increased revenue, partially offset by increased operating costs and amortization. When we adjust our excess or revenue over expenses to a cash basis, we add back amortization, which is non-cash expense. 
In 2010, the airport authority generated 154.7 million of cash flow prior to investment in capital projects, which is made up of the two amounts shown here. 68.7 of net cash flow from operations, plus 86 million net of collection costs from the AIF. During 2010, the airport authority invested 71.2 million in capital projects. So as shown here, we used, used 71.2 million of the cash generated in the year to pay for these capital projects. This left 83.5 million in cash, which in accordance with our financing plan, we used to pay down the balance on our bank facility so as to minimize interest costs, leaving the cash position at zero. In conclusion, the airport authority remains financially strong and well positioned to deal with the next phase of the airport's growth. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I'd like to now introduce Anne Murray, our Vice President, Environment and Community Affairs. Anne.